Okay, hello, welcome to the review for AHP 215. This is specifically for test number three, which covers the cardiovascular system, hematology, immunology, some endocrine system, as well as some respiratory system. So we'll get started very quickly here. What are the two components of blood? Remember, they are made up of basically plasma, the liquid part, and the formed elements uh, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Well, please know the difference between signs and symptoms. Remember, a sign is something that is recordable or uh, measurable, whereas a symptom is something the patient tells you. The smallest white blood cell in the body is also responsible for mostly destroying viruses. It's a type of a phagocyte. Uh, remember, it's not the smallest cell, it's the smallest white blood cell. Still larger than a red blood cell. Antibodies have another name. Remember we call these immunoglobulins or abbreviated Ig, and there's IgM, IgA, and IgD, IgG, and IgE. Uh, we talked about how much oxygen there is actually in the air that we breathe and what we refer to as room air. Uh, there's just under 21% oxygen, you'll remember that. The white blood cell that is specifically targeted by the immunodeficiency virus. We said this is a specific type of lymphocyte. The lifespan of a platelet is approximately how long? Now remember, when we have medications like aspirin that specifically target platelets for uh, inhibition, they are going to have um, a effect that's going to last the entire lifespan of that platelet. So if a patient is on aspirin therapy, then we're going to have to schedule the surgery for exactly one week after they stop taking aspirin. Big clue. Approximately how much of plasma is actually made up of water? Uh, remember, I said some books will say between 90 and 92%, so I just sort of split the difference. In that red blood cell, there is a globe-shaped molecule that actually holds the oxygen. This is the seat on the bus. This is the thing that actually carries the oxygen, this molecule. It is the most abundant molecule in the red blood cell and acts as a buffer in that cell as well. The most abundant of the white blood cells that specifically attacks Bacteria. Now, this white blood cell makes up about 65% of all the white blood cells in the body, uh, but it is the one that, although it can gobble up a lot of different things, is most specific for destroying uh, bacteria. The hormone that causes the release of calcium from the bone into the blood. We talked about this in the endocrine system. Uh, this is going to utilize those osteoclasts, in other words, to break that bone down and release the calcium and put it into the blood. Uh, synergism and antagonism, this is also from the endocrine system. We talked about how when hormones are working together to do the same thing, we call that synergism, or when they're working opposite one another, we call it antagonism. What kind of symptoms do we expect to see in a patient with hyperthyroidism? Remember with hyperthyroidism, hyperthyroidism, things are gonna speed up. So we're gonna see a lot of things working much faster. Uh, the hormone acting on the nephron will cause water to be reabsorbed back into the blood. Remember, our kidneys filter out a huge amount of water along with the waste products. So one of the things that we want to do is bring most of that water back. We bring back about 98% of that water. Uh, the red blood cell. The red blood cell is so packed full of uh, hemoglobin that it's going to be missing other components that cells normally have. Things like mitochondria, or things like the nucleus. There's no room on the bus for those. Pretty uh, basic question. What is the medical term for inflammation of a vein? Uh, this is phlebitis. Itis is inflammation of phlebo of the vein. Know the difference between internal and external respiration. I spent some time on this. Remember I said that internal respiration means that molecules have crossed a membrane. So even if um, we're talking about air moving into the trachea. Technically, it's still external. Uh, fun fact, an adult male has about five to six liters of blood, whereas a female adult has about four to five liters of blood. Therefore, on average, I would say we have about five liters of blood. And remember, if you lose three of those liters without replacement, there's no coming back. The hormone that is released from the pancreas during the starvation state, obviously this is an endocrine question as well. Um, this is something that is going to help raise blood sugar again. So this is one of the two main hormones I talked about coming from the pancreas. The pacemaker of the heart, we talked about that a lot. 
Uh, the largest artery in the body, this is the main artery that comes right from the left ventricle. Remember I said the blood comes out of that left ventricle at just under 200 miles per hour and into this very large artery. The cartilage that we find in the trachea to maintain patency of the trachea has a specific shape to it. Remember I said that this wants to give some strength, but it has to allow for um, the esophagus when we swallow something. It has to have that give in the posterior aspect of the trachea. So the cartilage is in that C shape. Uh, okay, this hormone is a hormone that will, that will eventually cause every cell in the body that is capable of growing to grow. So it doesn't do it directly, it sort of acts on the liver first, but then eventually what will happen is every cell that has that ability to grow, grow because of this specific hormone released from the anterior pituitary gland. Uh, when patients have sickle cell anemia, uh, the shape of the red blood cell is changed for a reason, and the hemoglobin molecule takes on a new shape because of that beta chain of the hemoglobin molecule. So the hemoglobin molecule will take on more of a stick shape rather than that globe shape that we know. This organ is located posterior to the sternum and is unique because it actually gets smaller as we get bigger. That's sort of the opposite of every other organ in our body. But this, of course, is the thymus located behind the sternal bones. In the physiology of hormones, we talked about stimulatory hormones and inhibitory hormones. Remember I said that a stimulatory hormone specifically tells tissue to do something, or tells a cell to do something, whereas inhibitory hormones specifically tell that tissue or tell that cell not to do something. Uh, which cells in the pancreas release insulin? Uh, I don't just mean the, the islets of Lagrahan cells. I mean specifically which of those cells. It is the uh, beta cells that release the insulin, it's the alpha cells that release the glucagon. All arteries carry blood in which direction? All arteries carry blood away from the heart, that's the rule. If we find a tube and it's taking blood away from the heart, the rule is we have to call it an artery, which means most arteries are going to be oxygenated, carry oxygenated blood with the exception of the pulmonary arteries. Uh, the smallest blood vessels in the body are of course the capillaries. They are so small that uh, even red blood cells have to go through single file and they have to squeeze their way through. The hormone that causes the uterus to contract in the ejection of milk from the breast. This is that hormone that is made in the hypothalamus, but it is stored and released in the posterior pituitary gland. And this, of course, is oxytocin, or we see the exogenous form of this used in labor and delivery called pitocin. In which part of the respiratory system are the true vocal cords located? That's going to be in the larynx. That's where we find the folds of vocal cords. It's not in the trachea, not in the bronchi, it's above that, it's in the larynx. The little V-shaped tissue we, we saw uh, earlier. What are the arteries that sit on the heart and bring oxygenated blood to the heart? Those, of course, are the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries are the first two main branches off of the aorta, and then, of course, the branch off from there. And these are the ones that are going to bring the oxygenated blood to the heart itself so that those cells can get the nutrients they need. Uh, this mineral corticoid causes the reabsorption of sodium into the blood, thereby causing the increase of water in the blood, which is of course going to increase blood pressure. This is a mineral corticoid that is coming from the adrenal cortex, and this would be aldosterone. Remember we talked about that. This lid-like structure covers the larynx when you swallow something. This is going to help keep it from going down the wrong tube. Uh, that is going to be the epiglottis. Uh, what is the typical, typically the initial first treatment therapy in type 2 diabetes? Remember, uh, in this case, when patients have type 2 diabetes, we can actually stop it, we can reverse it, or we can prevent it from happening to begin with simply by lifestyle modifications. So that's the hope. The exogenous form of this hormone is used to increase uterine contractions. As I said, that of course is uh, oxytocin. Uh, we're going to find it in, in pitocin. The brachiocephalic artery branches into a subclavian artery and what other important artery? Remember, this is the first big branch off of that aortic arch. It's going to come up uh, over to the right and then the one branch is going to become the subclavian, the right subclavian, and the other branch is going to go right up as the right common carotid artery toward the brain. Without this element, hemoglobin molecule cannot bind to oxygen. This, of course, is iron. Another name for a mature red blood cell, we would say that is 
an erythrocyte. T erythro is red, cyto is cell. What's another name for platelets? Now we call these thrombocytes because thrombus is a clot and the cyto is cell, although a platelet itself isn't a full cell, it is simply a fragment of a cell, part of a megakaryocyte. A red blood cell's lifespan of approximately how long? 120 days, we don't know that. What are the two hormones from the thyroid that work together to increase metabolism? Uh, these are triglycerides and thyroxine, but simply we just call them T3 and T4. Triglycerides is T3, thyroxine is T4. They both do the same thing. Uh, the only difference is T3 is much more potent than T4, so uh, we release about five times the amount of T4 as compared to T3. And we can actually convert T4 into T3 if we need it. Where is the pancreas located? The pancreas is located in the abdominal cavity, of course. It's located posterior to the stomach, tucked inside the first loop of small intestines, the duodenum, and the tail that points right over to the spleen. Know the heart valves. Please remember, from the right atrium to the right ventricle, the blood goes through the tricuspid valve. On the left side of the heart, from the left atrium to the left ventricle, the blood goes through the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve. So if you're thinking right to left, it's tricuspid, bicuspid, or tri before you buy. And then, of course, the semilunar valves are the ones um, that come from the ventricle. So the right ventricle going into the pulmonary trunk is going to have to pass through the pulmonary valve, and the blood going from the left ventricle into the aorta is going to have to pass through the aortic valve. What do the P wave, QRS complex, and the T wave on the ECG represent? Remember I went over this? I said if I were you, the first thing I would remember is what the T wave does. The T wave represents the repolarization of the ventricles. This is all about electrical current. That means both the P wave and the QRS complex are going to have something to do with depolarization. The P wave is going to represent depolarization of the SA node, the sinoatrial node, or the pacemaker of the heart. It's also going to represent the uh, right atrial and left atrial depolarization. The QRS complex is going to represent repolarization of the ventricles. And as I, I'm sorry, the QRS complex is going to represent depolarization of the ventricles. And then the T wave is the only one that represents repolarization. Uh, this hormone coming from the anterior pituitary gland is going to cause the release of T3 and T4. That, of course, is going to be the thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. And I think that's kind of simple. The white blood cell most specific for attacking parasites and allergens. This is going to be um, a, one of the granulocytes. And this specific granulocyte are the eosinophils, which make up somewhere around 1-2% to of all the white blood cells in the body. Blood returning from the lungs first enters this chamber of the heart. So remember, if blood is coming from the lungs, that means it has been oxygenated. So it is going to return to the left side of the heart to deliver that blood throughout the body. And of course, the first chamber that is going to come into is the left atrium. How many lobes does the right lung have? Right lung has three lobes, left lung has two. And the reason for that is because the heart, although it's centrally located, is kicked over to the left. That takes up some of the room where the left lung would normally be, or could normally be. This white blood cell releases histamine and heparin in the blood. This is another one of the granulocytes, and this is the basophil. This is the one granulocyte that is not a phagocyte. And that is it. So I hope this helps. Um, please make sure you watch this again and again. Take notes, write these things down, review them over and over. And this represents all the material that you'll need uh, for test number three. All right, thanks. Good luck.